Hi. Um, so, two questions, um, rather naive questions. I actually posed them to my third year undergraduate student, so I thought I'd better try and see if I could answer them. Uh, the second is perhaps a little trickier than the first. The short answer to the first is, of course, yes, art is playful. We are familiar with all kinds of trickery and shenanigans and tomfoolery, general messing about. We are also familiar with the view of the gallery, the studio, or the artistic milieu even, as a playground of sorts, kind of magic circle, separate and relatively free from everyday obligations. What goes on there is ab absorbing and intense, but ultimately unproductive, even wasteful. And after all, something of an illusion. This follows a long-standing view that play is superfluous to the value of labor, ritual, institutional, moral responsibility, and so on. At best, a pastime, and at worst, a dangerous distraction from what you should be doing. We might concede, then, that play is important for children and also for animals as something of a rehearsal for later life becoming adults, uh, or rather children, become adults through kind of make-believe and mimicry and so on. But again, beyond that, it is frivolous. Therefore, the artist is tolerated, given some license, and left alone to play. Even if that play is whimsical, egotistical, possessive, even violent, this is Picasso dressed as Popeye, in the hope that something marvelous will result, something that those of us engaged in the more serious business of the day would never have the time, nor indeed the inclination, to come up with. I need to pause here. You can just look at the image. So we might marvel at the artist who, much like the child, can transform the scraps and the refuse of the world into some extraordinary form of entertainment. You probably can't read it. On the upturned box, the text reads, Leisure Center. <laughs> That's in Glasgow. There's more to be said for this license to play. It allows you to stay light on your feet, for instance, a moving target. And this has been a recurrent avant-garde tactic against the weight of serious culture, with a big C, of course. Also, as with Lear's Fool, there might be something critical to all this messing about that deserves our attention, some way of speaking truth to power, albeit through riddles and word, word games. After all, the fool comes to be the only one whose advice Lear takes seriously. The one who plays lightly through mockery, irony, doubling, duplicity, and so on, might observe things differently, with more eyes or with more cells. And of course, if the powers that be feel that you've gone too far, you can always claim, and I'm sure we've all done this, that you are only messing. But still, we must take our place seriously, if not excessively so. And it is important to understand play not as a supplement to culture, but rather that culture develops in play, that, if you like, all culture is a species of play. Take, for example, the Balinese cockfight, which engages players deeply in intensity, and, sorry, and intensely. At stake is the social status of players, very extravagant bets are made, and so on, and yet the outcome of the fight changes little about their lives outside of play. In light of this, we might consider Bill Shankly's famous comment about football not being a matter of life and death, but being much, much more important than that. Bill Shankly. We are becoming more aware of play's importance in cognitive development, the adaptation of self to an unpredictable environment, in skills training, and so on. But more than this, I think the important thing is that we put ourselves at risk in play. And so the important issue is in play is how we relate socially. Play requires communication and trust, and a kind of non-personal intimacy between players. And if we manage to suspend our interests, if we forget ourselves in the pursuit of otherwise clear and unambiguous goals, which have been made more complicated and difficult through play, then something else happens in the meantime. No one actually ever scored a goal, I believe. Some other way, then, of encountering each other. So as our lives become more complex, like the Balinese cockfighters, we require play and cultural games to make things complicated but still legible. However, we might require artistic play, not to simplify our lives, but to construct models to show how those lives might be otherwise. For instance, the proposal here, the slides, as a means of urban transportation in Dublin, uh, Dublin in London. And this is why we should take artistic play seriously.